Hi, thanks for joining me today. What we're going to talk about today is Google Classroom. Google Classroom is a new feature that was added to the list of Google Apps for Education applications just about two or three months ago. And what it allows you to do is, as a teacher, you can create assignments and announcements and share them with your students using their Google Apps for Education login. When you first go to Google Classroom, you'll need to go to classroom.google.com and at the top right, once you've logged in, you'll see a little plus sign that shows up next to your login name. There's two things that you can do with this plus sign. One is to join a class, and at the end of the video here, I'm gonna come back to this point because this is where your students will need to go so that they can join your class, or you can click Create Class. I'm gonna do that now, and when you create a class for the first time, it just asks you for two basic pieces of information. You just need a basic class name, and then a section. Now, a lot of people have asked me before, do I need to add a class for each section that I teach? For instance, some secondary teachers teaching six or seven classes in a day, uh, they wanna know, do they need to create a separate section for each hour of the day that they teach? That's really up to the person, the teacher, as an individual, because there are benefits to both, but they've actually released some new features now that have made it so that you can grade all of the work for all of your classes from one view so i would suggest going going ahead and creating a section for each separate class that you teach during the day when you're finished just click create and it takes you straight into your class and at the top of the page here we've got a theme that they've applied this is just the general theme that they apply to every new class if you go to the right hand side you can click change class theme and they give you a list of several different little pieces of clip art that you can use for your class. So I'm going to just choose one of those just to make it look a little bit different. And then I'll click select class theme. It automatically applies that theme. And depending on how many classes you have, it's kind of nice to have a different theme for each one so that you can quickly associate the theme with the class and, and know which one you're going to. Down at the middle of the header, you see there are three menus. They tried to make it extremely simple. And there's the stream, which is where all of your announcements and your assignments will show up for your students. There's the students menu, which we'll get to in just a minute. And then there's the about menu. If you click on the about menu, this allows you to change information about your course. And it just comes up with a reminder the first time telling you to save what you're doing and that you can add class materials. So for instance, if I wanted to add the title here, this would allow a student who is just browsing through the courses on Google Classroom to find me in our organization and see if they're at the right class. And I can also add at the bottom on, on add materials, it gives me the option of uploading a file or I can attach a file from my Google Drive if I wanted to attach my syllabus for this class. I'm gonna leave this blank and I'm gonna go back to the stream for now. Now when you first create your class, the one thing that Google does is they stick a folder in your Google Drive account called Classroom. And inside that folder you'll also find subfolders for each section that you've created or each class that you've created. And then inside each folder you will see subfolders for assignments that you've given. For instance, if I look at the Google Drive account for this sample account, I can see that here's my Google Classroom folder. If I double click, I can see a folder for each section I had created. And then inside here, even though I haven't created anything yet, my assignments that I create will show up here. To add students to your class, that's the next thing that you're going to want to do. A lot of teachers will want to go to the Students tab and then what they'll try to do is go through and start searching for students and inviting them. But what's actually easier is that considering that you may, as a secondary teacher, have 100 or more students, or as a, a primary teacher, you may have 30 students, it's much easier for your students to join one class or maybe six classes as opposed to you entering 100 or more email addresses to invite students. So what I typically tell people is, give students the class code that shows up under the students tab and it's also found on the stream on the front of the class and what they will do is from the home screen 
they'll click on the plus sign just like you did when you created your class but they'll click join class and then they will type in the class code and click join once they do that ties your class to their home page and any other classes that they join will also show up there so it's pretty simple to add students the next thing that you're going to want to do is add some announcements to create your first announcement you just click on announcement and you can type anything that you want here and they give you the option on announcements and assignments of uh, uploading any file from your computer or uploading and attaching a drive item from your Google Drive account you can also add a YouTube video and the great thing about a YouTube video is that it's any YouTube video for that matter um, but you can also add if you click on it you can type in your YouTube handle and it will show a list of all of your own YouTube videos that you've created or that you've added to your account so it makes it easy to find them and if you want to just give the kids a link maybe they're going to study island or maybe they're going to another platform uh, for some online account that they have you can attach those links here as well um, so if I wanted to attach my syllabus here I could do that and then I'm just going to click post and then that shows up in the stream if you add things to your stream that you decide later you want to take away because they're no longer relevant to the class the menu button for your announcements and assignments shows up at the far right just three little dots and you can edit that or you can delete it for assignments you just click on add assignment and I'm going to type assignment one here and since many of your kids may be using the internet to turn in work for the very first time and they're not really sure of what they're doing a couple of things to keep in mind number one make sure that you provide a good description of how to access and upload assignments for your first assignment that's that's really key because it helps your kids understand how to do it for the first time and it's also something they can reference they can reference later if they forget so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now okay so that's done and a couple of things that I've done here in this description is that I've capitalized some of the words that are specific to assignments when you do them for instance there's an add button there's a create button and there's gonna be a turn in button that kids will press so I capitalize those so that they could reference those when they're doing the work um, I can also add a due date any due date of my choosing I just click on the date and then I can choose a date from the calendar and if you really want to get specific you can add a time from here I can also upload a doc so I'm going to find a doc to upload and since I don't really have any docs right now I'm just going to use one that I've used in the past for uh, some of our standards so I'm going to go find that one and this is just allowing me to access my Google Drive account you see I'm in my drive if I wanted to I could still go back and upload something or if you've starred your documents that you use more often uh, on a frequent basis you can click the start menu and you can choose from those I'm going to choose this document and click add and see it shows up here now with this you'll notice that I've uploaded a PDF file and over at the right here there's an option that says students can view file at this point if I wanted to change that I have some other options if I choose students can edit file the thing you have to remember is that since it's a document you created if you choose students can edit file then that means any and every student that opens it can type in it and edit it and that changes your original if that's your intent that's great for things like discussion boards uh, or if it's group projects that you want your students to work on in collaborative groups but if it's a document that you want them to fill out and turn in you'll want to choose make a copy for each student what that does is it takes the original makes a copy of it and puts it in their Google Drive folder because just as I said before where you have a drive a classroom folder in your Google Drive account when they join your class they also receive a classroom folder on Google Drive when you're finished then just click assign or if you have any other attachments that you want to put on there like say for instance you want to add another document you can add multiple documents or if you want to add a video you can add a video 
and it all shows up right there. When you're finished, click Assign, and it shows up as part of your stream. Now, what I've done is I've actually logged out of my Google Classroom account as a teacher, and I've logged into a different account, and I'm gonna go up to the top here and click the plus sign, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like to join a class as a student. If I click Join Class, I can enter the class code, and click Join. And as I said, this will throw a folder onto my account for this class. I can see the assignment that we just created. And here are my instructions. And if I click, you'll notice that the document that I uploaded is no longer here. It's actually hyperlinked to the title of the assessment or to the title of the assignment. If I click on assignment, it takes me into the assignment. And we've got two menus up here. One says instructions which is what it originally looked like, and one says your work. Now from here, as I said before, I added some keywords like click add to upload your work. The student does have an add button where they can upload a file from their computer or upload a file from Drive. I also said click create to open a Google Doc. So if I don't necessarily need them to use this one but create their own work such as typing an essay, then they can click create and they can cre create a Google document. So as you can see here, my assignment has been created and if I click on it, it opens it up and you see what looks like a normal Google document. But in addition to all the other tools and the buttons up here, I have a new button that says turn in. So when I'm finished with this assignment, all I have to do as a student is click turn in. So I'm gonna do that now and it takes me back to Google Classroom and it says turn in your work. It's asking for me to verify that that's what I want to do. And I can add a note to my teacher if I want. Only the teacher can see it. If I don't want to do that, I click turn in and the assignment goes to the teacher. And it says your assignment has been turned in at the top. One key thing that students will want to make sure they understand is that when they click turn in, they will also have to close the tab that they're working on on that assignment so that it can turn it in successfully. I also have the option of unsubmitting the work if I decide that I need to add or change something before turning it in to the teacher and I made a mistake, I can do that. From here, I can click the back arrow to go back to the front page. And what's great for the students is on this assignment, now at the top right, it says done. So the student knows that they're finished with that assignment. Now if I were to go back in and log in as the teacher, and I'll do that now, if I go back into the class, then as a teacher I can see that one student is done and zero are not done, meaning that I only have one student in the class, that's me, and their work is done. From here I could click on the one done, I could see the assignment. So when you're grading, it's all, of, all in one view. You can click on the name of the student, click on their work and make any comments that you'd like. But if you don't have any comments to make, you can, on the work, you can add them here and post them, or you can leave a grade and hit enter. Now, just because the grade has been entered does not mean that it's finalized until you go up here to the top left, make sure the box is checked next to the student's name and click return. You can leave feedback for them if you want, but if you don't, just hit return assignment and then the student will get automatic feedback showing that their work has been graded and the teachers recorded it. Interestingly enough, while we're sitting here doing this, I've gotten notification by email as a student. So that's a quick rundown on Google Classroom. If you have more questions, we do have a couple of classes offered this semester on Google Classroom, so make sure you sign up for those on our website.